Hey again, everyone. Uh, after the last short video showing some per-vertex ambient inclusion solving and storage inside of Unity, uh, one of the commenters on a post I made about that feature said, yeah, it's great, but you know, it should really be integrated into Beast, and you should be able to store the output of Beast, including ambient inclusion, into vertex color data. Uh, I completely agree. Beast is an absolutely spectacular application, and I, for a long time, have wished it could, could store things directly to vertex color. Uh, Modo's internal renderer can store a GI simulation in vertex colors in one click, but it can't do ambient occlusion that way. They do have that, you know, render to a pass and then store that uh, as vertex colors process, but that does require UVs and a bunch of other stuff. It's sort of unpleasant. So here I have a scene in Unity as, you know, programmer art warning. Um, and uh, I've already rendered, I was actually going to show the rendering process, just do this whole thing from scratch, but it takes too long with Beast, honestly. So here you can see we have some orange bleeding and blue bleeding in here, and you can see this has been processed, so these nice big wide soft shadows back here and everything. So this is a Beast approved finished rendered thing. We see that the uh, light the light has no effect, you know, because we're using um, effectively far light maps. This is a one light map only, far style, forward rendering compatible, Wonderful setup, okay. And I just wanna show uh, one approach to actually storing this. I'm not entirely sure if this is what people were asking for, but uh, here's something you can do. So using that deep copy script, we're going to deep copy, say the floor object here by itself. We're gonna go over here. And you can see this is what the light map information for this object looks like just by itself, is what was actually stored. What we'd like to do is to bake that down to vertex colors, assuming that if you wanted ambient inclusion, like this is going to look a little weird because it includes shadows uh, and ambient inclusion and color bouncing, but obviously you can do whatever passes you want in Beast independently. I just did this all in one shot, so it'd be easy to, to illustrate. We want to bake this down into vertex colors. In order to do that, uh, one thing we need to do is to make sure that our light maps, which are over here in this you know, automatically generated directory that Unity creates, these actually need to make, we need to make sure that these can be read. So the, in order to do that, we have to go to texture type, change it to advanced, and click on read, write, enabled. And you know, we're gonna do that for all of them. And I'm, I'm showing this because I forgot to do this so many times that it really became essentially obvious that this needed to be like clearly stated up front, like, wow, do you need to do this? Okay. So here we have that, and here we have this object. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a, uh, debug uh, shader on here that's just going to show vertex colors, and I'm going to bake these GI colors into vertex using this script here, which is included in the file that'll be in the comments and also in the post. Light map to vertex color. And there you go. That's the horrible, terrible light map only, or the vertex color representation of what was actually stored in the map. I have a uh, pre-prepared shader that includes uh, the right material and the right tiling settings and all that for this just as a vertex color shader. Now what this shader actually is this GI ground thing over here. Um, I don't know if it's really worth trying to show too much of this, but here you can see the shader here. This is a really simple, <clears throat> excuse me, vertex and fragment shader. And this does not interact with anything in the world at all. No shadows, no, no other light maps, nothing. It's just a vertex fragment shader. If you wanted this to be more sophisticated, if you wanted it to be a surface shader or whatever, it's not difficult to, I mean, the original version of this I had was a surface shader and I just, I just wanted the simplest thing I could to display the effect here. So, okay, we have that. And uh, I'm gonna delete this. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and just deep copy all of these independently, individually. And you kind of have to do this one at a time the way the script works. I should make it nicer one of these days. Deep copy, deep copy, deep copy. And I'm just going to create an empty game object for storage, call this vertex colors. And I don't know what happened there. It looks like I clicked on one of these things twice, probably. Terrible things. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Um, hold on, I think we just have too many. Uh, let's pretend that that goes up there. Sure it does. Right, I'm not really sure what that was, but I'm just going to ignore it. Um, light map to vertex color on each of the, actually, you know, one thing about this script that's kind of convenient, unlike the deep copy, you can just do a whole bunch of ones, light map to vertex color. And now if we put this debug vertex color on them individually, this is what the vertex data for that whole scene actually looks like. This is sort of what that GI was sort of stored as. And these are, again are the prepared shaders that include uh, support for 
per vertex light map transfer data. So here is your scene as rendered. Oh, that doesn't look right. That looks like that's maybe. Can that possibly be the real shader? Oh, yeah. So it is. Well, that look about that bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kind of surprised it came out so well. Um, but of course, it's really not all that good. I mean, you can see there's lots of problems and stuff in here. Um, really, just the resolution isn't very high. Uh, but that would probably be true of the vertex, the the ambient inclusion software I had in the other example. You just you'd need you know larger settings and a feathier result. Actually, that doesn't really come out that badly at all. Honestly, back here, I'm surprised. This is using fairly dense geometry. Obviously, Tesla did this a little bit to illustrate this, but. Uh, there you go. This is a shader that has, you know, variable degree of intensity. Apparently the intensity, um, I read a post by Aris talking about how do you, how do you get vertex lighting data back out of the, of the, uh, the EXR as it generates and turn it into something useful for illuminance because it's not a simple blend or an overlay. And the answer um, that he gave in this forum post going back a couple years is that uh, it, it's basically you have to multiply the light map channel light map data is stored in images in such a way that the RGB value has to be multiplied by the alpha value, has to be multiplied by some constant, the default value for which is 8, uh, but it changes by platform. Now I have on the shader that's associated with these a little slider that lets you change that constant, and obviously it's useless in this case, it just sort of does a bunch of noisy things. Um, you would probably not want to use a slider for this, you would probably want somewhere to define a global a global value uh, that defaults to eight that then you modulate for whatever looks good on your target platform. So if you're looking at this on a PC and then you publish to iPhone, apparently that value will change and it, it really should be specified globally for the entire project. So the shader slider that this that comes with this project, that's great for testing, but it's not very good for actual work. You would you would for actual production purposes want to store that as a global variable somewhere in the project. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's very, 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 very fast, um, you know, vertex fragment shader that did a pretty decent job of copying Beast's, uh, you know, global illumination and ambient inclusion data over to vertex colors. I uh, hope it's useful. And I need to, <laughs> the last video, I have a bunch of audio cut out, so I'm going to be real quiet and end this very slowly. <laughs>